Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Asus ROG Zephyrus. I believe it's an M16 model GU603H. The full model is GU603HM-211.ZM16. Alright, so we're going to be using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. So the way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Alright, I don't know why there's a big dent in the bottom of this thing. The customer told me that it died after some liquid damage. Um, so I guess we'll open it up and see what we see. Alright, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, I do have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. If you could subscribe to that one, that would help a lot. Um, there are these little rubber things here. I think there used to be ones here too. But anyways, I'm just going to use a little flathead screwdriver to pop that out. Okay. And we're going to get all those screws out. Okay, I think there was only, oops, I think there was only three of those. But uh, I only see one, so they must have fallen out at some point on their own. All right, let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws. So far, it looks like those three screws that would have had the rubber pieces over them would have been smaller than the rest. So keep that in mind. I don't know if the customer opened this before on their own or had someone else open it. So if something else is different, I'm not sure. These screws also seem to be shorter, so keep that in mind. All right. Two more. All right, now that we've got all the screws out, let's go ahead and pop the bottom. It looks like this screw actually stays attached, which helps with opening it because it creates a little gap here. Okay, so now that you have the gap, you can kind of lift up here. I'll just slide my fingernail along the edges. Obviously, you can use pry tools, but it looks like that already kind of got it open. You can wiggle this around and then flip that over. And there's what it looks like on the bottom of the cover. Okay, so now we have access to the inside here. Um, oh wow, okay, that looks kind of bad. You can see there's some of the green crusty corrosion stuff there. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and pop the battery uh, connector out. So I'll zoom, oops, let me, forgot to do a screenshot for this. Okay, so there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to disconnect the battery. There's a little latch here. So you need to slide this little thing up once you slide that back, be very careful. You don't want to slide it too hard or you can break it. It's just barely slid back so it's no longer on top of this white connector. Then you go underneath there and just pull that up, okay? Just like that. And now the battery is disconnected. All right, one thing to do after disconnecting the battery is to open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. I believe the battery probably completely died already and, um, yeah, so we probably don't need to do this step, also since it was shorted with all the liquid damage. Um, but we're going to do it anyways just to be safe, okay? There we go. I'm going to try and clean off some of this corrosion here. Um, luckily, it's just in these little components. So, Oops, sorry. So they might be lucky and it might survive. But uh, we'll find out. Okay, because if these little components are dead, I can't fix those. I'll have to see if my partner can um, take a look and see. This is the LCD LVDS connector. If you're going to mess with this, make sure that you did uh, disconnect the battery and then hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. I'm going to pull this connector out just like that. Okay. You can see a whole lot of corrosion all over here as well. Come on, focus. There you go. See that corrosion there? In there so all the corrosion is mostly here that I'm seeing if I see anything that looks completely toast then most likely the board's fried and my partner's gonna have to work on it, it this one there's a tiny one here that looks kind of bad so I have a feeling it's gonna be toast you see that little piece there that one looks kind of toasted 
Um, there's corrosion all over here as well. So let me actually remove the SSD. There's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. All right, we're gonna remove the one screw. After we remove that screw, we should be able to lift it slowly. Okay, there's a thermal pad underneath, I believe, so it's kind of stuck down a bit. So go slowly, work your way closer to the middle, continue pulling up slowly. There we go. And we can go ahead and wiggle and pull that out. And there you go, there's the thermal pad. Again, there's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. So if you want to replace it, you can with another one. Also, there's another slot for an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here with the screw. So that's nice, they include the screw there. Let's actually also pull the battery out just in case there's some corrosion or signs of liquid damage underneath there. Four screws, two at the top, and then two down here. All right, now that we got those, we're just gonna get underneath. Lift that up, here we go. All right, Yo, what is that? Huh. Oh no, it looks like some liquid damage or corrosion or something. It doesn't really come off easily. Um, the model number of this battery is C41N2013, okay? And here you can see the keyboard connectors here with the flip latch. Uh, this is the touchpad connector with the flip latch here, and then the keyboard backlight connector with the flip latch on this side. You have this little cable for, I'm not sure what this is. This might be for it to detect that the screen is open or closed but there's a little latch there. Okay, um, what else? You got the wireless card here. The antennas are underneath this black piece of tape. To remove them, you go from the tail and pull them up. I'm gonna leave them as is. Um, yeah, from looking at this, I have a feeling my partner's going to have to work on it. It's, there's, you see that corrosion there as well? Yeah, so. I don't think it's going to be just temporary shorts caused by the corrosion there. But uh, let's try something. We're going to plug this back in. So let's reconnect the LCD LVDS connector. Come on, why not? It's a little difficult to get this connector back in. Okay, pull that all the way in, make sure it's latched in. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in without the battery and we're gonna see if there's any signs of life at all or if it's completely dead. I think the customer said they tried another charger which is not really a good idea to do when it's completely dead if the charger turns itself off. And some aftermarket ones don't have fail safes built in, it'll just push power in, it won't burn. But uh, let's see, I don't know. This is also kind of scary plugging it in. Um, also, there's a little cable there. Usually that's for the power button, but it might just be for the little lights on this one and maybe these buttons here. I do see another cable there. Hmm. But yeah, I'm not gonna mess around with that. Anyways, let's go ahead and see. We'll plug it in and hopefully it doesn't just go on fire or something, okay? And okay, so far nothing. And none of these lights are on. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the board is toast. None of these lights are on at all. I did test the charger earlier and it was showing voltage, so the charger itself should be okay. Um, but yeah, most likely the board is toast. So I'm gonna put this back together and then I'm gonna have my partner take a look and see if he can diagnose all the circuits. Um, but yeah, he doesn't really make videos and that kind of thing is a long process. They're gonna have to order parts and things and back and forth checking. So anyways, let's go ahead and get this back in. The battery to get it back in, very simple. Just line it up, push it down and then slide that metal tab back over, okay. We'll go ahead and put the SSD back in as well. Okay. Just push it like that. 
and then stick it back down or drop it back down and make sure that this little cutout portion goes beyond the raised lip of this um, screw hole screw mount because otherwise it will pinch between or pinch the SSD and you don't want it to do that you can break it okay so there we go then we're gonna go ahead and get the screws for the battery back in my other worry is the SSD was right where all the liquid spill was or the, all the corrosion was so the SSD might be dead as well um, but we'll see what the customer wants to do if they want to try getting data off of it or um, if they don't even care about the data and they just want the computer to work um, but anyways I'll, I forgot to also show the RAM here two tabs pull the two tabs to the side and should be able to pop it up okay just like that and this RAM is an 8 gig PC4 oops sorry 8 gig PC4 3200 AA so if you want to upgrade your RAM you can put any PC4 3200 AA RAM the thing is there's only one slot here so I don't think there's enough room for it to have another slot so most likely the other RAM is just soldered directly to the board okay so there we go we got that all back in we're gonna go ahead and get this cover back on and pretty much just click everything back together okay we'll get the screws back in I like to twist it backwards to hear it click and then uh, tighten it down that way it makes sure that the screw is not going crooked into the screw hole okay there we go and that's pretty much it again hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did please make sure to like comment subscribe share share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well and if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing all to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living all right if you can't help out that way it would help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see again i do have another channel called it's been reviewed and more same profile picture but zoomed in um, if you could subscribe there as well that would really help me out um, other than that that's pretty much all there is to it we're just going to get all these screws back in um, i'll plug it in one more time just to see with the battery connected but i'm pretty sure it's not going to do anything and uh yeah all right and also if you took those rubber things out don't forget to put them back if you want them there they're not necessary they don't really do anything except um, make the look a little cleaner and then make it harder to open later so yeah most likely these are all gonna get lost I don't even know if it's gonna stick well anymore but there we go okay it is staying on there all right we'll plug it in one more time just to see if any change I doubt it but uh won't hurt or it shouldn't hurt <laughs> okay plug that in no lights no signs of life nothing okay anyways that's pretty much it again thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one Let's drop this bite